Hey folks, it's Ray, DCRamRecord.com here, and today we've got your full in-depth review of the new Elite Riser. The riser allows your bike to go up and down while also allowing steering. So in a nutshell, it's like combining a kicker climb with a Steerzo Smart. If you're familiar with Zwift, you may know that last year, last August, they introduced steering in-game for the Steerzo Smart, a little pizza plate that you stuck underneath your front wheel and allowed you to steer left and right. We've since seen that integrated into various smart bikes as well. Now, while there are a lot of similarities between Elite Riser and the Kicker Climb, there's also a lot of differences, a lot of little nuanced things that you're like, huh, that's, that's pretty smart. And we'll get to all those in just a second. But the first thing we'll do is we're gonna back this truck back up over to there, that table there, and I'm gonna unbox it real quick. So the box itself is basically like a dorm room fridge. It's, it's pretty darn big for what would be, it's kind of small inside of it, but it's really, really well protected, which is good. There's like, this thing is not gonna arrive broken in any way, shape or form. Once you take the top boxes out, which includes the power supply and some of the axle accessories, you'll find that the entire tower power inside there. Find a way to get that out of the box. It's a little bit tricky at first because it's actually pretty darn heavy. The entire base is a stainless steel beast, uh, so it's weighted down, doesn't move anywhere. Maybe addressing one of the complaints that the original steers are smart that was a little bit lightweight and it can maybe sometimes move in different directions you didn't want it to. Once that's done, you've got all your parts in front of you. Essentially, you have a giganto power brick right there, uh, followed up by a couple of power cord adapters. Uh, and then next to that, you've got your manuals along with a bunch of adapters for different through axle and quick release skewers. And of course the skewer itself. Pretty straightforward. Also straightforward, assembly. Once you drag the thing to your trainer spot of choice, you're simply gonna put it on the ground and you go ahead and you find the correct through axle adapter or quick release skewer for your bike, pop in both sides, pop in the skewer, and you're done. From there, you'll pair it up to your smart trainer, and you do that by holding down the middle lock icon for about three seconds, and that'll go ahead and start searching for AMP Plus FEC trainers. Now, it, the way it does this is actually super interesting, and it makes it so it's not just limited to elite trainers, but there are some caveats we'll talk about in just a second. Oh, hey, um, future me from later in the video here, after I'm done going up a 16% grade and suffering a bunch, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, at this point, just whack that like button. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, back to unboxing or something boring like that. What it's looking for is the AMP Plus FEC channel behind the scenes. That's basically the smart trainer control channel that virtually every smart trainer on the market has had for years, so it's not really a problem there. And once it finds it, it pairs to that but it doesn't take up that channel from a control standpoint. Instead, it's like an international mystery man spy and just listens carefully to that channel and listens to what the various apps are telling it. And what's even more interesting there is even when you're using Apple TV on Zwift over Bluetooth Smart, all the trainers today actually also mimic that entire thing over AMP Plus FEC as well at the same time, meaning it can just quietly listen to that and it's good to go. And that's a core difference between the Elite Riser and the Kicker Climb that I got sitting over there, is the Kicker Climb is only compatible with Wahoo trainers, the Kicker 18, the Kicker 20, the Kicker 17, I believe, and the Kicker Core and the Kicker Snap, uh, but not compatible with anything else. You can't use the Kicker Climb with the Dredo XR, for example. Whereas in the Elite's case, you can use it with any trainer that's compatible. Now, compatibility gets into two buckets. First is AMP plus FEC, just consider that pretty much good across the board. The second though is the actual movement of the trainer itself. And by that, I mean, will you break anything on your bike when your bike goes up and down? Uh, so in this case, if I just, I uh, loosen this a second ago so you can see what's gonna happen here. Uh, not quite enough, I guess, there we go. Uh, I can bring my bike up and down with relative ease. And if I remove this out of the way for a second, you can see it goes down until I hit the basement there or the floor, no problem at all. But some bikes won't. When they go down, they're gonna hit a portion of the trainer right there on the other side. That'll basically snap your chainstay. Not, not really an ideal sort of scenario. Uh, so there are some trainers that we know do not work, for example. Some of the older kickers, uh, the kicker 16, I believe, and prior, because of the way it's built, has a little shelf there, so it'll hit that. And the same is actually true of Elite's original Dredo and Dredo X trainer. Uh, from Elite's side, they've got their Dredo XR, so this one right there, their Suito, uh, the T versions of both of those, so the Suito T and the Dredo uh, XR-T, which basically means they didn't come with a cassette, the Elite 2O, and uh, the Elite and that's it. Beyond that, I haven't like tested every trainer out there and it's really gonna be up to those trainer manufacturers to validate and certify compatibility. That's something you will not probably see Elite do because 
They don't want to be responsible for like the wrong trainer company doing it wrong and all of a sudden you breaking your bike. So let's talk about how this works. Uh, and for that, I'm going to quickly pair up and then kit up and then we'll get going. Uh, so in this case, I'm just pairing like normal. There's no real change there. Uh, so I'm pairing to my smart trainer you can see right there, controllable trainer and cadence. But I also need to pair the steering side of it, like left and right here. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to go down to steering and left hand side there. Check that. And then on this particular build of Zwift that I have right now to be able to show you this before it goes into production. Uh, it shows up as the Steerzo. In reality, it shows up as the riser the rest of the time, but that won't happen until August. So this is what I got for today. So with that, good to go. And then you'll see on the left-hand side, it says Steerzo, and normally it would show me the left and right uh, degrees as I turned it, basically tell me whether or not it's centered. Now I simply click OK, and then I'm good to roll. So I'm gonna go grab my kit real quick and be right back. Okay, so when you first start riding, you the screen right here for future work steering. Steering still technically in beta and Zwift. Uh, so there you go. Future work steering explains that you can't steer any other riders. You basically have to stay on your half of the road, your lane of the road. And that ultimately the goal of steering in Zwift is to be able to get behind the draft better or to be able to cut corners. So starting off here in the flats, what we'll do is I'll show you steering. I just go left. Oh, avatar goes out left. I can't cross the center line. That's as far left as I can go. And then right hand side there. I basically kind of end up on that white line there. Uh, so, but I can go anywhere in here. I can just stay, you know, just like that. I can kind of go wherever I want there, uh, just using my handlebars. And certainly there's tons of discussion over the last year about the fact that, you know, you don't steer with your handlebars and outside, you steer by leaning, and that's both true and not true. Uh, you initially start by leaning, but ultimately you do move your handlebars. Otherwise, there'd be no reason for the handlebars to move at all. Uh, and ultimately, as we've seen over the last year, it hasn't really mattered. People are perfectly fine using the Sears Smart by turning their handlebars. So in this case, I'm on these little like slight rollers right now. I'm trying to get to kind of some steeper parts here. Uh, and so you're able to see that as I go up this slight hill in a second, it's gonna go from negative 2% up to whatever it is. And you should see me go up here. There we go, just a little bit. Now in my case, I've got my trainer difficulty set to 100%, which means that it's more than the default of 50%. That means that I'm gonna feel the full extent of each one of these. I'm gonna get the full five, six, seven, eight percent Whereas if you kept it the default, it'll be only 4%. However, going downhill, no matter what you set your trainer difficult setting to in the menu, it'll still have your downhills. But Elite has a solution for that. In this case, there's an option in the smartphone app that allows you to go ahead and override that. So anytime that it receives a downhill command, it simply doubles it, getting you back to normal. That allows you to go ahead and separate out the trainer difficulty set in Zwift from what riser receives. So in that case, it'll go ahead and ignore whatever set by Zwift and just simply give you the full extent, the full gradient, regardless of what Zwift is sending you the trainer to simulate back there. And while I'm showing Zwift, it's important to note that the incline function here works with any app out there. And the reason is, it's just simply mirroring the gradient sent by the app itself. So every single app knows how to talk both AMP plus FEC and Bluetooth Smart FTMS, broadcast that and says, hey, make the trainer go 8%. In which case the riser says, sure, I'll do 8% too. It's as easy as that. Now for steering, only Zwift has steering right now. The good news is that unlike the steers of Smart, the riser is not exclusive to Zwift, which means that other apps can't actually develop for it. So hopefully we see that. Now things get a little bit steeper later on in this climb, so let me show you a couple of the cool things. One is that you can change the gradient whenever you want. So in this case, it's locked to what Zwift is saying, but I can unlock that and I can say, you know what? I'm gonna go down, all the way down. There we go. Down, yikes. Uh, and then I go all the way up. This is negative 10%, the furthest down you can go. Or I can go all the way up to 20%. Okay, now I'm back pretty far right now. I'm gonna go back to whatever Swift wants me at. I just press the middle button there. There we go, it's bringing it back to nine, 10, oh, 14, 15% right now. Lots of fun. The feeling, the movement here is pretty good. Uh, it doesn't feel herky jerky, it goes relatively smoothly between the two of them. It's pretty darn quiet. You hear this tiny little electrical motor there uh, between them, but 
it's very, very quiet overall. Basically like the same lot, and this is my drivetrain. Now, one of the interesting things to note here is that while there's steering still there, of course, there's nobody out here right now because I've got it on a different world, so I can show you this, is that the base actually moves as well. So if you look closely at the base, those rails, that'll move as I go up and down. The reason for that, of course, is that your bike going up and down is changing the lateral position of the fork. The kicker climb does the same thing. It just tilts like this instead, but the same general concept. Speaking of differences there, the kicker climb has a belt. This is not, it has a metal screw inside of it. Uh, so there's no chance the belt snapping because there is no belt. Something that Elite said they saw on Wahoo's kicker climb happen and didn't want to see it happen here. So there's that difference there. And beyond that, I've got to focus on pedaling. Oh, right, stability, very stable. That beefcake of a plate down there is super strong. Like there's very little, even if I do a sprint, hold on, getting right here for it. That's as much sprint as my legs need right now. You'll see the thing didn't move at all. It's completely stuck there. Myself a center lane there. No reason to do extra distance on this. What else did I have to talk about? Ah, that's right. Five seconds after you stop pedaling, it zeroes things out for a safety perspective. So it always zeroes it out. As soon as I start pedaling again, it'll go back to the defined distance or defined incline, 10%. But I stop. One, two, three, four, five, down. It's technically when the speed goes to zero, so in my case, it took an extra second for that, but that happens as well. Similarly, from a safety standpoint, if a pet or small child runs by, you can always just hit this right there to basically take control again. So you always have control over the riser as well. Now, in case you're wondering about the wild kicker, which is down there, yeah, I slapped it on you. Uh, it's variable in terms of like how seamless this is with a non-elite trainer. It definitely, like it's going up right now. The gradient is sucking as it should. Uh, and as long as things are stable, it's good. It's when I see like shifts in gradient a bit that sometimes, like if I were to slow down here, sometimes this will react to my slowing down. You can see right there, the gradient didn't change much one degree, but dropped a little more than that, went up a little bit. So it seems to hunt and peck a little bit, but I think that's something that Elite says they're working on. So we'll see how that is down the road once they finalize that bit. Okay, as much fun as that is, I did that last night already and this morning too. So I'm good on climbing that climb right now. Instead, I think that's all there really is to tell you about this, uh, except the price. I think I've mentioned the price before, but it is 799 euros. The US dollar pricing I'll pop on the screen right now. And by down below, I literally mean it. I'm going down here to talk about this one because this is going to hurt. The price is $1,099, $1,099. And there's no way that's happy about that, especially Elite. Uh, and talking to Elite about the price, it really comes down to the international shipping market right now. So the cost of a cargo container for them to get this product, which is made in Italy, to the US has gone up 400% for them in the last 12 months. 400% uh, since last August, last July, when they were shipping these trainers out here. Uh, and for an item that is large and bulky, that hurts even more than a smaller item where you can pack a lot more in there. Elite says they know that the price is not ideal for the U.S. market. They're hoping that maybe in 2022 or beyond, the global shipping market would get a little better on that. And mind you, this isn't just Elite. This is impacting everyone in every industry in every way. Uh, and if you do some searching on it, go ahead and you can find plenty of articles about the cost of shipping over the last year. But on the average, it's increased between three times and ten times, which is insane to think about that. And it hurts Elite more than most because their products are so large and bulky compared to a much smaller product where you can generally kind of get more bang for your buck there. But unfortunately, 
like everything else right now, it is kind of what it is. Uh, obviously, that's more expensive than the kick or climb, uh, but of course, it does include the steering, so that's like worth a hundred and something bucks there. Um, and on top of that, it's got other features that are pretty useful, like the ability to go ahead and do the offsets for the downhill simulation as well as the trainer difficulty, both of which the Wahoo unit doesn't have. Also, this is compatible with any trainer out there, uh, so it's not just the Wahoo trainers, meaning that you're not in, like ecosystem locked if you don't want to. Inversely, however, the kicker climb it does have the small little remote there uh, that you can put in your handlebars to control as opposed to have to reaching down on this. Honestly, in like the however many years I've had the kicker climb, I've never really used the remote other than to like activate the Zwift integration or activate the app controlling it. In that case, I just tap it once and I'm good for the, the entire ride. So uh, I don't really think that's a, a showstopper one way or the other, but of course some people do like the manual mode there. So that is an option if you wanted that. As far as kicker climb versus riser, really comes down to like one and a half things. Uh, the half a thing is, do you want to steer? If you want to steer, then this is the only option. Uh, the climb doesn't have that. And then two, um, do you have the Wahoo kicker trainers already? If so, and if you don't care about steering, I probably just go with the kicker climb. It's built into the ecosystem, works great. But if you don't, and you do care about steering, if you have any other trainer out there, then the riser, well, it's only, your only other option, actually, to be honest. But it's a pretty solid option. One, I mean, literally, it's a beast of a solid option. Uh, it is very, very sturdy uh, and also technically pretty solid as well. With that, hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If so, go ahead and give that like a whack button. Whack a like button. There we go. And hit subscribe. It really helps the channel and all that jazz that you already know. Have a good one. I forgot one more thing. It has a handle. I don't know why it has a handle, but it does. Also, it's like genuine Italian leather or something, I think. Uh, it's kind of swanky. Not so swanky, the fact that I can make like a bazooka out of this. I mean, like how cool is that? My inner six-year-old is, is there. But if you need to take this with you, need like get a ride or something, off you go.